So that finishes our research, our investigation of analytic reconstruction formulas for the radon transform. Uh, but there's one more aspect which uh, I would like to mention and which will lead us to what we're going to do next week. Um, I already told you that the parallel geometry um, which we looked at and for which we derived the inversion formulas were actually a simplification. That's not the real thing. And what really happens is very close to what we looked at in the 3D case. That's the so-called fan beam uh, measurement. We have for every fixed position of the source curve for every fixed position of the source of the x-ray source we can measure also in the two-dimensional case uh, the lines that uh, start at this point over here so even if we just look at the two-dimensional case then the kind of measurements uh, that we have is we have, uh, the all the we can measure all the lines that start over here and then go through the body um, this is definitely not what we described as parallel geometry uh, that only that's only true if that point over here is infinitely far away uh, so by face values our, our recon algorithm that we re, uh, that we uh, derived simply doesn't work here now uh, what can we do well we can now derive a special um, reconstruction algorithm for this geometry which is possible and which can be done or we can use the second uh, the, the second alternative we can just use interpolation to map the measurements that we have onto a parallel geometry and then do our analytic reconstruction from that um, however, we have the feeling that uh, it's not very nice that uh, we, uh, it was actually a coincidence that uh, we could come up with a reconstruction algorithm for parallel geometry and also uh, coming up with a reconstruction algorithm for this one here, it's an analytic reconstruction algorithm for this one isn't too easy as well. So, um, this gives us a lot of restrictions, right? I mean, it could be that from some directions we just cannot measure in a given um, in in a given tomograph, and uh, so we'd be completely lost, right? We need all the measurements for our reconstruction algorithm, and so if there's something missing, then we can't do anything with that. Also, if anything is non-equispaced, we won't be able to tackle that using our analytical algorithms. So that's not good. Um, and um, I'm going to introduce you to a new idea, which is so simple that uh, you probably won't believe it. So uh, the idea simply is, well, we finally want to compute an image uh, and that image has a finite resolution. So let's, for simplicity, assume that all we want to compute is an image of size, well, three by three, it should be Typical is, is about 1024 times 1024, but let's leave it at three, three times three. So this should be a three times three image. Uh, this is the reconstruction area over here. And um, of course that uh, image consists of nine pixels. And in each pixel, we have values uh, from F1 to F9. Okay, uh, so our assumption is that we have an image that is uh, uh, the, um, the um, function f that we reconstruct is constant equal to f1 in this pixel over here, equal to f2 over here, equal to f3 over here, and so on. Now, um, we have made measurements and uh, like, let's take the measurement line L1 over here. So we've me measured the integral over L along this line. Okay, and the result was G1. So integral over L1, F of X dx is G1. Now, if this is a reasonable approximation to our function F, then also the integral over L over this discrete thing over here, should be equal to g1 but that's now easily computed because um the um when we um the um <laughs> the, the approximation is constant along uh, in in this tile in this part over here and the length over of, of the line over here is um 
one third, uh, let's, let's call it H. So the contribution to the line integral of this pixel over here is something like F1 times H. Same thing here, the intersection between L1 and this pixel is again, the length is again H. So uh, contribution of this pixel to the line integral is H times F2 and it's H times F3 over here. And all the contributions should uh, add up to the measurements. So uh, we would assume that H times F1 plus H times F2 plus H times F3 should be equal to G1. Okay, uh, but we can do that for any line, right? So um, we would assume that the sum of the contributions of each pixel to the line integral times the, uh, the value of the picture in that, uh, in that uh, pixel, fp, should be equal, should sum up to the measurement that we had. So we get something like the sum of all p, a, k, p times fp is gk, where a, k, p is the length of the intersection of the line with the pixel. And again, I mean, this is just the contribution of the pixel p to the line integral along lk. Okay, so uh, that's pretty straightforward. But now uh, this is just a linear equation. Right, so we can write it as a matrix vector equation, and uh, so putting a equals to a k p g equal uh, uh, g as the vector of all measurements, f the vector of all um, pixel values, then we have the matrix vector equation a f equals g, simple matrix equation which we can solve for a, or maybe we'll have to take the least square solution or something, but anyway we can solve it and uh, we get an approximation of f, which discreetly satisfies our measurements, which sounds great. Okay, um, so this is completely independent of any geometrical considerations. You can measure along any lines you like, and still this algorithm is going to work. Okay, that's great. Um, and uh, probably it's going to be a little bit slow uh, because that matrix is probably going to be pretty large. Um, as I said, usually you have um, um, approx and you have um, um, image size, excuse me, an image size of something, something like 1000 times 1000. So uh, these are 1 million unknowns and um, several million values of uh, several million measurements. So this is quite some size. But uh, nevertheless, we might be able to solve this equation iteratively, and that's exactly what we'll do next week. <laughs>